Welcome to Digital Asset News. Today, what I wanna to talk to you about is not the news, I wanna to talk to you about the future. And in general, I wanna to talk to you about uh, buying virtual land on this decentralized game called The Sandbox. And I'm gonna to talk to you about some the, the most common questions I get, and then we're going to go over some things like how to buy land. So the first thing I wanna talk about is uh, The Sandbox versus like say The Sims or like Second Life. What do I put on my land after I buy it? The Sandbox Marketplace versus the OpenSea Marketplace. Why I prefer OpenSea. Also taking a look at the buying land criteria. What I'm looking at right now to actually uh, buy the land because it's a little bit different than actual physical land and physical property. And lastly, we're going to talk about let's go shopping where we're going to actually purchase a plot of land in the Sandbox. So first things first, what's the difference between the Sandbox and the Sims and everything else? Well, the Sandbox, first of all, it's got some pretty good partners. We take a look at it here. I mean, we've got uh, everybody from uh, Snoop Dogg, The Walking Dead, South China Morning Post, I guess. Okay. Uh, you got uh, Roller Coast Tycoon. Hell's uh, everything that, that uh, you think is like, okay, that's a pretty good place. People might want to go there and hang out. So if I look at it, to me, it looks like it looks like Roblox or it looks like Minecraft, you know, very pixelated and whatnot. So if I'm just thinking of myself, like what's the difference between that and say like Sims, Roblox, um, and then like Second Life, it's because in the sandbox, it's you and you can do pretty much whatever you want to do. For the Sims and for the Second Life and for Minecraft, it's a centralized game developer and they set the rules and the boundaries. But nothing wrong with that. But just that's just how it is. So you're not going to be able to go to like the Sims and purchase property and then resell property. You're not going to be able to bring in an NFT, resell an NFT, or do whatever you want to. You're not going to be able to be able to uh, sell ad space or have ads there or sell NFTs. You're not going to be able to do like say like a virtual conference uh, where you can uh, uh, have people uh, pay an entry fee to listen to you speak or for have somebody else and rent out the land and somebody else speaks on your land. Uh, depending on what it is. So in those uh, regards, there's a huge difference. And then the, another question I get is, what's the difference between this and like, say, uh, you know, uh, Meta or Facebook and the, and the Metaverse and maybe with like uh, Microsoft and what they're doing with their Metaverse? In my opinion, it's just my opinion, I don't see how like, say, like the sandbox and it's pretty, pretty sprawling, vast area is is going to be like the other two. So you have to remember, like, I believe that each land has its own, not just use case, but why people would actually want to go there. So like on Microsoft, maybe people just wanted to go there for, for meetings and, and uh, you know, do remote type of work. And for Meta, I honestly don't know why people would go to Meta for Facebook. It seems ridiculous. I don't know why people want to keep getting their, their identity stolen and uh, having all their uh, our information sold, but whatever. And then like the sandbox and like say Alluvium and then say like UFO game and like say Decentraland. I think people can just kind of go there and it's not just a one, a one place wins all. They're like, hey, I like sandbox for this, whatever it evolves into. Hey, I like Decentraland for that, whatever it evolves into. And I kind of just see it like how people will travel to say, I want to be in New York on Wednesday and I'm going to go to Los Angeles on Friday. Well, not everybody can do that. But in the metaverse, you definitely can go to all these places. So I don't think it's a one size fits all. And I think that is the big difference between, say, these decentralized games like a sandbox and the other ones to talk about as far as like Second Life and Facebook and all that other stuff that is out there. So that's how I see things as far as that. Now, that takes care of the first part. The second part is, well, I got this land, Rob. What do I put on it? Well, just like we talked about, if you want to you know, you buy this land, you want to put some kind of experience on it, or you can actually resell it or you want to do. But if you want to actually put like a game, you want to put like a conference, you want to put some type of replayability or something that engages uh, people as they walk through uh, the sandbox, you have to put something on it that makes them want to come back. So what do you do? Well, there's two options here right now. First of all, you can, well, it's three, really. You can hire a developer. They can start to help you create things. Or you can just go through the, uh, the Sandbox Maker. Or you get a place called Metazone.io. And, of course, you can start to buy things like just games built right in for 500 mana. It, Corona Zombies, I don't know what all this stuff is. Yeah, Ethereum Egg Nest, da, da 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 You can actually purchase buildings, so you can actually rent these things out if you really wanted to. This could be like a virtual meeting room for businesses. Hey, you want to 
meet here because now you're remotely working instead of actually paying for uh, actual office space because of the different things that happened over the last two years. Well, I got a great space for you. Do that. Also, new crazy stuff like be your own decentralized exchange. I don't know if that's what I would do. It seems kind of risky. And then, of course, you can do media. You can sell ad space. The games we talk about. NPCs, you can sell vehicles, it, it, the list goes on and on. So it, whatever you want to put in your lands, it's up to you to decide which direction you're going to go. It's just like buying a physical piece of land and going, what do I want this land for? Do I want this for myself and, and just for like me to, to do little things? That's fine, but that's kind of like second life. Or do I want to be like, I want it as a commercial space and I want to put uh, a casino here. I want to have this as like a conference space. I want to have this as like, I'm going to sell billboards and ads for all the different people that are going to be walking through. It's really up to you of what you want to put on there. And that's just one thing. Also, you can put things like uh, the sandbox just came out with this thing called a game maker. You download it. You don't need any coding ability. It's pretty much like a plug and play. You just snap things in and bing, bang, boom, you have uh, your game. Now, of course, it's not that easy. I still have to play around with it, but you see where I'm going with this and the possibilities really become endless. So that takes care of that part. Now what I want to talk to you real quick about is the sandbox market where you can actually buy um, skins, you can buy vehicles, you can buy all those things that we just talked about, but you can also buy land. And when you go to the sandbox, see on the left-hand side here, it's got kind of squished. It says uh, home, then underneath that it says market. And the little blue thing says create, map, and about. So this is where you can actually find all the land that you want to buy. Now you can uh, purchase it in sand. You can purchase it on uh, in Ethereum. Just depends on how it'll go. Actually, no, I think it's all just uh, the native currency on this one. Nope, I'm incorrect. You can use Ethereum. So you just you just connect your MetaMask wallet. If you don't know how to use a MetaMask wallet, very simple. There's going to be a, a link that's going to pop up right now. You can check that video out. Also, one thing I've learned about MetaMask is uh, if you're going to use it, don't use it with Brave. I know some people have had no problems. I've had nothing but problems with using it with Brave. And uh, I have a real issue now with that. So I've gone back to Chrome, no problem. Some people, no problems. I have another problem until I switch back to Chrome. Just my little uh, snippet of info there. So that's um, the land part as far as like the, the marketplace. And I can click on this and I can buy it. I can do a, a filter, go from lowest price, highest price if you're a baller, newest, oldest, whatever else. But that's all I can really do. This is why I like OpenSea. Because on OpenSea, what I can do is I can do uh, searches. I can list it by single items or bundles. I can go low to high. I can put in a search term, which we're going to get to. That's really important that you put this one search term in. I'll get to that at the very end. And you can actually list it by, uh, you can either do a buy now type of thing, or you can do it um, by an auction. I don't recommend the auction. I'll get to that. But just so you know, if you're on OpenSea, all you have to do is up here where it says, let me blow this up so you can see a little bit better. Okay. So I've got uh, explore stats resources. If you go to explore, go down to virtual worlds right here under domain names, virtual worlds. When I click on that, good amount that are out there. Actually, it's not that many. In all honesty, here's the central land. Here's the sandbox. We click on the sandbox. Now you can put in all your criteria. And then you're going to see as this thing pops up, it's going to be everything. So if you over here where it talks about type, it says on sale in and type. If you hover over that, you can buy assets like these things, which I'm sure look goofy now, but are probably be super important later. But if I click on uh, the one that says, let me bring this up so you can see it. Uh, it says land. There's land and asset under type. Bring this down, type. I'm just going to click on land, and then voila, there I have all the land that is for sale and low to high and so on and so forth. So that is uh, the difference between uh, those two things. And again, this search bar is important to use that. So that's what we have for those two. And the big thing, though, is when I was looking through this, I'm like, usually on regular real estate, uh, you'll have comparables. Like if you want to buy a half million dollar house, or a million dollar house, you're like, okay, well, why is it valued at a million dollars? So show me some comparables, especially in that area and uh, what everything is going for. What is it actually appraised at? Because there's a central appraiser and tell me how much it is because it's going to dictate the loan, all that stuff. 
But in virtual land, there really is none of that. There's no like virtual appraiser. There's no really, there's kind of comparables actually, uh, but they, they vary widely. So right now, it's just about getting the best deal and there's certain criteria, which leads me to my next point, uh, which is uh, taking a look at buying land criteria. So this is part of the formula that I, I've come up with. And this is, this is not all encompassing. This is just a part of it. So what I see is like, look, there is scarcity there. If we take a look at the sandbox, there's 166,464 NFT spaces or land pieces, right? And those are just the little individuals, those are parcels. You can put them together and make estates. The more you have, the better off it is, the more of a, uh, a state mogul you are. And we talked about the filter thing. You can go lowest price or open sea. And there's this word called connect. It's gonna be super important in a second. The next part is usually in real estate, we've all heard this whole, this term, location, location, location. And that's dictates everything, right? It's a lot, you're gonna pay a lot more for a uh, 1200 square foot condo that's right on the beach, as opposed to a 10,000 square foot house that is probably in a, a rundown area, just location. But in reality, in Decentraland, in sandbox and these types of places i think it's its location is good but it's going to be the content in the long run that really uh picks up the pace and really makes people actually go to these areas so remember uh, if i have multiple pieces of land in the real world let's just say in the real world and i've got a pretty good area where i'm selling some widgets or i'm selling tvs because people really want to buy tvs in this one area i can't just easily pick up my shop and all my TVs and everything else and go across town to another place, which is like where people are like, hey, we just lost all our TVs. I can't do that. But in the metaverse, I can pick up like that, take everything over and stick another piece of land. So I can do all that stuff. Also, as users are walking through and, you know, we, we took a look at that, uh, that in-game kind of video where people are walking around, they don't have to walk anywhere. They can just pick a point and just teleport there in an instant. So I think in the beginning, you're gonna see a lot of people just walking around going, this is cool, oh, nice. But then as, as things kind of shift out, people are like, I wanna go here, here, and here. I wanna to go to the casino, I wanna take a look at NFTs, and I wanna to go to this conference. And that's it. And they may walk around around those areas. So it's kind of important to get around some big, huge hubs, or like uh, in, in uh, retail shops, we call those anchors. So that is the third part. And the fourth part we just, we just talked about uh, aesthetic scenes, engaging games, NFT galleries, conferences, education will rule in the future. That's going to bring people back. But right now, location works pretty well. And another thing that I'd like to say is the more pieces of land you have, the better. Just uh, so you can do a lot more things. So that is the part of the criteria. Now let's do some fun stuff and uh, let's go shopping. This is this is where I like. I like to shop like to buy things, like to accumulate assets. And I like to accumulate, uh, if you've been on the, the channel for a while, you know that me and my wife like to uh, invest into short-term rental properties, uh, buy those uh, passive income. Well, it's not really that passive. And then those are the assets. And of course they appreciate it, helps with taxes and blah, blah, blah. So I see this as the next big thing, the next, the next evolution, the next step, why not? So here's one as I was perusing OpenSea and I found this, this land piece, I'm like, hmm, three and a half ETH, because I just filtered it by price. I didn't want to go for uh, the offer part because just so you know, I, I, let me blow this up so you can all see this. So see right here where it says three and a half ETH and you can buy now or make an offer. So people make offers of like, they lowball everybody and they're like, ah, I'm smart. I'm going to get this cheap. You're not. What's going to happen is this 0 0.45 wrapped ETH, it's going to expire and they're not going to approve it because they know that land's going to go off uh, pretty well. Now you might get lucky, but Every time that you put an offer in, in wrapped ETH or whatever else, you're going to pay gas fees just to put that offer up. And if it expires, which I see like every piece of land I've seen has pretty much uh, had a bunch of expirations, not all of them, but a lot of them, that means that you just lost that gas fee. So for me, I just want to make things simple. You can auction, you can try it, make an offer, but I would probably get closer to the three and a half ETH, just like in the real world. No one's going to give you a house for 10,000 bucks if it's a listed price for a million, just saying. So on this one, I'm like, okay, what I want to look at is the criteria, right? There's nothing on it, so I'll put it on there, but I want to take a look at the location itself and see what exactly is going on. So see these numbers right here? 
it says 138 and negative 74. What is that? Well, in the map itself, this huge map, it's all on an X and Y axis. So you really want to be around these anchors, in my opinion. Like, see right here, you got, uh, let me see, ba -ba -ba. you got stuff, let's just play around. You got The Walking Dead, The Sandbox is going to have a bunch of little games, uh, so probably around there, Sandbox, 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 Smurfs, that's cool. Atari, I wouldn't mind being, or being around them. You got Snoop Dogg over here. Oh, I definitely want to be by him, especially if you have, if you're more of an arts, uh, artistic type of person, music, NFT type of thing. Atari would be good for games and so on and so forth. Walking Dead, same thing. And you can just see, like, this is probably the place you want to be around. You don't have to be right next to them, but probably around these areas. Central's good, but it doesn't matter. You can be anywhere you really want to be. So that is the kind of like the criteria for that piece. Um, but when I'm looking at this 138 and negative 74, where is that? Well, I could hunt around, but really what this is, is going back to math class, everything's on an X and Y axis. Okay. This is a very, uh, simple one. So the more you move on the X, which is the horizontal axis, this is where things are. So in this case, 138 is positive. It would be far to the right on the X, on the X axis. And then the, uh, negative 74 that would be on the y-axis moving down. Okay, 138, negative 74, where would that be? Well, that's a positive on the x, so that would be more towards the right, so towards the x4 around here, and then negative 74 would be down a little bit. So you're probably looking around the south, I guess you want to do directions, the southeast of, uh, of the land itself. And to make this even more simple, you can just go over to the map itself <clears throat> and then plug in the coordinates in the in the very top where it says 138 and negative 74 and it'll take you right there so this is the land itself this is the one that is for sale and what we want to do is like around what's around here well you got ah, let me get this out of the way you got atari right up here that's pretty cool i like that uh you got uh board ape yacht club something or other you got hex uh, if you for all your hexologists that are that are there, sure. You've got this plant. What is this one? Nothing really right now. Uh, so maybe, maybe that's that's a good one for you. I passed on this one because I'm like, I don't really see the the big deal. And also, if I'm looking at this, I want to see. Let me just see where it is in general. So let me, I'm going to zoom out. When in doubt, zoom out. Okay. So I am. Again, you are on. The very right hand side and the lower corner kind of so that's not where i want to be so i'm going to pass also here's another one that i found again three and a half ETH, not too bad i mean for right now remember when these were being sold it wasn't near this expensive and it hasn't been that long so do you what do you think's gonna happen in the next one to five years anyhow this is three and a half ETH. the lands on 53 and negative 114 let's take a look at that and that's up over here okay so let me get out of here let me blow this out. So I'm by Atari. I like that. And what else do we have? So I'm by the Mets. I guess if you're a big Mets fan. And the good thing is, is that if you look at this, you are right over, you're right on top of the Sandbox Estate. So that would be a good one for somebody. But for me, I'm like, it's only one parcel I'm going to pass. Next one, this is the one I was going to actually buy. And it was cool because it was two pieces of land and it was these different parcels that were like three and a half ETH, 3.25 ETH, and only one, they got two. So it's always better to double up if you can actually do it. And the question was, well, where is it? Uh, connected great land. See, it says 49 and 65. So 49 and 65 is pretty near the center of where we want to be. And actually, let me see. Let it refresh. And again, you can do, do that in the uh, address bar up above. Just put in 49 and 65. Okay, pretty much near the center. And uh, looking pretty good. Let's see. Let me blow this up so you can see it. So right here is where it's at. But again, um, it was still a pretty good, pretty good plot of land because you get two for it. And unfortunately, when I was filming this video, I had some uh, technical issues, so I had to step away. And uh, somebody snatched it from me, and I was pretty ticked off. 
However, it led to an opportunity, which it always does, right? So what I did was I found one of these. There was two plots of land for 2.38 ETH, and it was close to that big, huge, walking dead game that's coming out. So I thought that could be a pretty big thing. So I actually uh, picked that up, and now I own these two pieces of land uh, right here. Let me get this out of here. And this one below. So not too bad. And then where am I? Well, let's zoom out. So essentially, I am right in the center of the entire map. And this is exactly where I want to be. And it's right near a nice anchor, which was The Walking Dead. And uh, this was, I thought, a pretty good buy, especially for two pieces going like that. So now what I want to talk to you about is how I actually bought it. Pretty simple. We already have our MetaMask installed and connected. I'm going to click on this blue button that says buy bundle because I'm going to buy this bundle of land for a two by one. Pretty good deal, I think. And then uh, after that, it's going to ask me some questions. It's okay, that I'm going to click on here. Yes and yes. And I'm going to click on confirm checkout. And I just bought or almost did. So now I get to pay for this enormous gas fee, blah, blah, blah. That's a lot. And I'm going to hover over here and then click on confirm. Wow, that's a lot of gas. That's just how it is. And uh, now we're done. And congratulations, you just purchased a set of virtual land for a lot of money, uh, which hopefully it'll uh, appreciate in the due time. Now I want to talk to you about is how did I find that? Because there's a lot of stuff to go through. So again, when I go through the filters and I'm going through the type, I'm going to just put land. I want to also filter out. I don't want to do an auction. I don't care. I just want to see what we have for buy now. And then we got priced low to high. And I went through all these things. And it's, how many pages is it? It's 2,549 results. It's a lot to go through, okay, to be honest with you. But what I did is I put in the search bar. And I just put connect. I didn't put connected. I didn't put connecting. I just put connect because there's different spellings of, of, of connected land. So I just did that. I pressed enter. And voila, these are the things you might want to look at. And I'll probably uh, pick up another one uh, before I get out from this video. Because look, there's one here, two by one connected near the coin market cap, two connected lands, perfect for small projects, two attached connected lands, and so on and so forth. If they don't come up for whatever reason, see over here it says all items, or it'll say single items and bundles. I just click on bundles, because if you, if you go to... Uh, single items and click on connect it'll just come up as like there's nothing there so you either have to have bundles or uh, all items to go from that but that is how i find some pretty good deals so instead of paying like three four five for one parcel i can get it for um you know pretty cheap actually this one looks pretty good two by one on genesis and uh that is essentially uh it for this video so look um, I, st I believe that this is going to be the future. I think there's going to be a lot of, uh, a lot of millionaires made in this arena. This isn't a get rich quick overnight. I think this is a very long play as things start to move forward. But if you noticed wherever city you live on the outskirts of town, if they, you'll see like, uh, some big corporations buy up plots of land. Cause they know in like five years, all they gotta do is sit on it and it will only appreciate. And that's usually what we see here. So. Again, this is not financial advice. This is a financial opinion, doing our research. And that's it for today. So look, if you found value in this video, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about are time sensitive, especially like this video, but that's it. So thanks so much for sticking with me. I appreciate it. I'll see you on the next one.